everyone. It's been a bit. Sorry about that. Uh, just have some new. What do you call it? Responsibilities. Got a little busier in my life, like in general overall. <clears throat> uh, super sorry. This, you know, the sport's been great, but I am sorry. It's been so long since my last video. Um, today, we're going to be doing Hit Spark Basics. What does that mean? Well, so Hit Spark is just like when things just slam into each other, basically. Um, you know, they're in lots of different games. Um, the Let's just go through here. Let's see. Their purpose. Show impact of two objects. Show type of impact. Um, can help you express the style of the game. Um, I think some games sort of fall short here. And it's hard, you know, there's so many things to do in a game. Um, it's hard to keep everything in mind with every little asset that you're making. But um, this one's important. I'm trying to push harder on this one. Um, you know, the type of hit sparks I did in Aces Wild wouldn't necessarily do in this game. Uh, it creates new challenges, but in the end it can end up looking really great. It can influence the game feel, of course. It's one of the main reasons we do it. Um, and I'd like to mention that... Um, you know, game feel, huge part of game feel is clarity, not just visual candy. So the candy part can feel great, um, but clarity is also important. So if you have too many hit sparks going on, you know, it's too much candy, it's uh, it's not as good as if you make a clear game. And one of the very last changes I made in Aces Wild was to make projectiles flash. Um, really accentuated them, same with the enemies, and it just it made the game feel even better. It already had good game feel, but um, you know, improving clarity went a long ways. Um, so the, the main purpose of this video is to just run down some basics. Um, this will apply to a lot of visual effects. We're going to use hit sparks, just quick, you know, impact sort of effects. Um, we're going to go through a bunch of different shapes, how to animate them in simple ways. And hopefully that'll lead to, you know, in a way to help you out. And then we'll also learn about, like, um, layering them and why that's important and helpful. Um, so, yeah, let's get to it. Um, hopefully all these are lined up. We're actually going to go through a bunch of examples. So let's see here. This should be muted. So we have Third Strike here. Big thanks to Maximilian. Um, here's a fighting game channel um personality just a real cool dude let's see here hopefully he's not mad showing his play here i thought this was lined up to a better effect there it is okay so third strike one of the most beautiful games ever made in my opinion most people's opinion um pretty simple effects though for their at least for their regular impact spark. Super gorgeous sprites, super fluid animation. Why get in the way of that? Um, oh, I missed my impact frame there. Went a little too fast. So that I think is really important. Um, they have these big flashy effects or impact and then it quickly gets out of the way. A lot of good fighting games do this. Guilty Gear does this. Um, it's really important. Um, you want that information to stay on the screen. You know, your, your character state, things like that. Um, and it's fluid enough that it matches the style. Um, you know, it's toned down compared to like other games they had been making. You know, Capcom. You know, you had Marvel vs. Capcom, some over-the-top stuff. Um, this effect is particularly cool, in my opinion, is that it's it's a pre-rendered like particle effect but they have this impact frame here and it only lasts for one frame they don't even animate it but it gives like so much punch so much style um, it's just it's awesome um, just a thing to keep in mind you know one of the most smoothly animated gorgeously detailed sprites um, has these really simple hit effects um, it actually works in its favor you know again the rule I wrote down here if the character animations are overshadowed, shadowed, why take so much time animating them? 
serious question, not just rhetorical, you can make a great looking game with simple character animations, more complex hit effects. You know, on the other end, don't undo all that work you've been doing. Ideally, they should accentuate the character animations and physics. Um, you may not know this, but there's actually some slight rotations in the effect based on in third strike, based on how the character hits. Um, it's minor, but it helps, you know, help with the variety and things like that. And then, you know, there's more bigger sort of sparks and things um, for more heavy attacks and things like that. Um, let's see. What's our next one? More versus Capcom here. So you can see those huge explosive effects. Um, but it's the same thing. There's a big flash, but they get out of there. Um, you know, I don't want to throw too many games under the bus, but I feel like Skullgirls had a gorgeous animation, but their effects sort of like last on the screen. And this is from an old version. Maybe they've cleaned it up a bit. I think I've mentioned this before, but um, you can see here some really intense stuff. Let's see. They actually have special effect here when specials hit. This big old slash. That's an effect you'll see a lot. Um, and a lot of people, one of the reasons it's super easy to animate, you just use a sphere and stretch it out. This is actually isn't spherical, it's straight. Um, you just stretch it out and squeeze it down. Um, it looks really nice. But again, where a lot of people will fail is like leaving that on there too long. They, they want to show the motion of the effect rather than favoring like the impact of the effect. Um, just something to keep in mind here too. So yeah, it just flashes on there, gets out of there real quick. Um, I thought this was a really great example. Um, I already thought, I wanted to show it anyway, because they have like dust, and it's kind of cool, that's, that's where the aesthetic thing comes in. Um, I wonder if it was blood in the past, um, you know, maybe in their earlier ones, um, versions of the game, but it just looks really nice. It, it works in a similar way to blood, but it's um, a little less graphic, you know, maybe. Um, maybe it just helps with the appeal overall. Um, it's a little bit weird. You can see some repetition there, unfortunately. Um, that's another thing to keep in mind. And what could be helpful is help with the visual fatigue, as it can be called. To create a little bit of variation there so when it's happening repeatedly um, or with a repeated attack or something like that you can create variety without having to um, you know make new animations or make dynamic animations or anything you can see with those like laser effects too how it's just like this simple spark just appears and then gets out of there right away oh man got an ad we gotta wait through here one DMC four is interesting, where it has a real similar effect. Um, they layer it a little bit more. They have a little bit more going on, but they're way less over the top. I don't really remember. It. I've played a lot of both the games, but um, as you can see, the actual hit sparks, you know, the effects on the swords and things like that. Like you can't even see it. This is one of the reasons I showed this enemy here is you can barely see the effects, the hit sparks. Um, in my own game, I actually draw the sparks on top. You know, a whole new camera, a whole new, you know, render layer. Because uh, I think that looks a little bit weird. You know, it's not like this is a bad looking game. They also have character effects where they're bouncing around and stuff. But, uh, you know, I found it a little strange going back to that. Let's see. Got Secret here. Y'all pump for Soul Calibur 6 coming up soon. I always thought Tekken had really bad effects. Um, great animations, but Soul Calibur always had some really good ones. They have, you know, things for when there's a counter hit, um, certain stuns, you know, as the game went on, that they had that stun system, like, really going on. Um, they accentuate the state of the game, it creates just more texture for the aesthetic, you know, there's sparks, you know, there's swords clanking, and, um, just things like that. You can see this, like, shockwave coming off. And I also like this example, because it's something you might not think to do, um, you know, it's kind of weird, like this weird shockwave just coming off. Uh, you know, the hope there. This is getting a little sort of out of the scope there, but just wanted to show that little effect there. 
This one I love. Um, oh, it's just that one shot I wanted to show. Just how, you know, Final Fantasy 15 did a good job of like really appealing to the aesthetic. Um, this isn't necessarily an impact spark, but it, you know, these long horizontal sort of lens flares, and I think that create a really cool look. But we go here, and this is old footage of the game, but I really liked how this game looked. You know, this had a lot of turmoil in this game, but uh, the development of the game. It's kind of a bummer. There's all these more fantastical settings I wish you got to go to. But they have this great hit spark where it's all these like wispy things coming out. And there's these big impacts. So you have this game that's a little more chaotic. You know, it's the camera's drawn back a bit. You have all these enemies. Um, but you have these big wispy effects that, you know, they match sort of the magical feel of the game. They're almost metallic looking, so it accentuates sort of the, you know, the sword play, you know, they're having a bunch of swords is sort of a gameplay mechanic in the game. So you can kind of see, you know, where it starts, so you know who's getting hit, but then it, it creates this, but then it goes on to, um, uh, you know, it, it, trying to find the words here. Um, they just sort of whisper around, basically. Um, and it's cool, you know, it's its own unique thing. It's something that I hadn't really seen before in the time, at the time. Um, so yeah, I really, really like <laughs> those effects. You know, this is a huge budget game, so... Um, you know, they had more time to experiment and do, like, unique things using these. I would like to do a video on this one that effect exactly how they do it and I've seen it in other games it's just I really liked you know again this footage from 2011 a little bit older and I think these effects were in place before that even oh. I feel like there's older footage and see it gets chaotic but again quickly gets out of the way they also layer it with these like big sparks here and in the chaos of battle you can see who's getting hit because of the point of impact and then the wisps themselves sort of point themselves towards, um, you know, who's being hit. Um, it's mostly visual candy, but um, the added clarity isn't lost at all. So I, I really like this effect. Now, speaking of candy, we're going to go to another series. Um, Under Night in Birth, they have these... Cr I don't... I'm going to just say I don't like it. I don't, I'm not going to say it's bad, but it's like too sweet for me. And I love sweets, but uh, their effects, I'll show them in slow motion first. You know, they appear, big flash, they fade out a lot, but then they hold on to their fade out portion for a long time. And what they do is do this just additive blending with a single color. So it's sort of hanging out there. It is clear, but it's not too overpowering. You know, it blends into the background. Um, you can see these huge effects. And this is actually two or three effects. There's a star here that's sent this like spike ball. It's animated separately. And then, you know, the horizontal slash you see a lot in a lot of games because it's easy to animate and it looks nice. I use it too. So. But, you know, full speed. There's just, they just come and go so quickly. It's just, it's so intense. They're so big. Uh, you may love it. But it, I start to feel the fatigue of it. They use the same animation pacing in their actual character animations. So it's a really good way to make ni nice looking animations without having a lot of frames. Um, but it uh, creates a bit of fatigue. The characters animate at the same rate. The rate's the wrong word, but it's sort of the same pacing as the effects. And it's just so punchy, like. But you may love it, so I like to show that example. Guilty Gear coming up here. They have these big effects here. This is when specials hit. They have these star sort of effects in here. Try to ignore Slayer's big punch here. That sort of frame the action. You know, these big effects, you can see how it faded out. Come on, my dude. So, boom. And it's actually starting pretty small, which is kind of unique. Um, 
I like to say to start big. Like you don't necessarily want to start at the logical start of like an effect. Kind of want to start when it's a little bit bigger. You have these big arrows here, literally like pointing at the action. And they hold on a little bit and then they quickly, you know, the next frame, they shoot out, get out of the way. So it creates this great effect, but also keeps the clarity. We know what's going on. You know, we got the hit. Um, we can continue with follow-ups or whatever we want to do. So coming up right here, when a heavy strike, I think it's like level four or higher. If you know Guilt Gear, you understand the levels, but it's like a heavy attack. They sort of just spray out like that. And these are all hand animated, um, even though they use like meshes and 3D stuff here, they hand animate a lot of stuff. But with these, I like this effect because they take three like horizontal slashes like this and then have a ring. And there's a little bit of random offset with these slashes. And the ring's also not perfectly circular. They either rotated it in space, I'm not sure, because um, it might be on a 3D mesh, I can't quite tell. Or they just squished it. Um, it gives it a little bit of an edge. It matches that Guilty Gear style. Um, you know, it's not like a perfect circle. <coughs> and, you know, another great, gorgeous looking game. Simple effect. You know, it's a mix of simplicity and smartness, in my opinion. You know, it hits here. Big. Flashy. Real bright. HDR coming in. You know, the post-processing stuff. Making it really glow. That fades out a bit. And then those just squeeze like you would think. And they quickly get out of the way. We have these other little sparks here too that I hadn't noticed till before. And full speed just looks really nice. Just lets you know that you got the hit. It's not too overwhelming. Um, Create some nice candy. Looks nice. show some dynasty warriors here because this is a game where you fight hundreds of enemies and you may not want over the top effects so we just struck all those dudes if we had crazy over the fought effect oh my gosh over the top particles happening it would get too nuts it also be just you know processor intensive but um you know, instead, they use the physics animations, you know, throwing enemies up in the air. Um, it also helps frame the character. You know, these games are about, like, really holding up the player and the character that you're playing as and all their over-the-top stuff. And them just being thrown around and things like that. So you don't, you don't want to ruin that, you know. They have these little sparks. They literally fall down out of the way. Um... You know, so that you can get back to the character animations. <clears throat> Here comes this game. So they have Aces Wild. Um, they're a little over the top, but it was on purpose. Um, have these rings that happen once you exceed a certain damage level. Have these circles that are similar to the Third Strike ones I did. And then you have these, like, wedge shapes here. That... I got inspired from like Street Fighter Alpha and I'll show you how to do them. They can look really cool. They're also in like Mega Man X. Um, and then I have these like background shapes that we haven't seen too much of. Um, they were in there like in Guilty Gear, but they were a little more muted. But I like them because they can... Oh, and um, Uniel. The one with that samurai girl. They're just real simple. They can help with the style. You can animate them in different ways to create like a pacing variation, you know, like layering the different type of animation pacing. Um, and they're nice. You see them a lot in like Final Fantasy with their effects, but it's usually like something darker to accentuate the stuff in the foreground. And then I like to think that my effects get out of the way really quick too. So. Brought Tekken in. Um, gosh, another ad, sorry. See if there's any chat, I'm gonna check in the chat. So Tekken used to have some really bad effects, in my opinion. Again, great animations. <coughs> Excuse me. I think they really some cool stuff. So this one's neat because it's sort of a lot of times you think of like the impact space. 
in like screen space. These ones happen a little bit more in like real space. So these like sparks shooting out in the direction of the force. Um, and I thought there was some that even went against it. Because their old effects used to be like that, where they have these effects like here, like on his elbow. I just think they, even here, I think, don't think they look great. But these bigger ones look dope. I really liked on that juggle. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, I'm not used to talking so much. <clears throat> How? Right here, this is just particularly nice. It just really frames the action. You know, we got boom, we got the impact. Those sparks quickly get out of the way. And you're left with Kazuya being right here, and getting tossed around. And it's nice, you know. You know, of course, they just look awesome just by themselves. But it shows the direction of the impact. Um, just another thing to keep in mind. You know, they have like a swirly effect using a post-process sort of shockwave ring there. And then the actual like sparks flying. Let's see. Brought up Bayonetta. Oh no, this is a... Uh, smash. I thought it was Bayonetta. But this one was cool because, and I couldn't, I swear I've seen them in Kirby games, you know, some of the same developers. But I couldn't find footage of it, but it's not in Smash, so. You know, similar to those Soul Calibur ones, they have these things, that just like these weird, like, half shock waves, like, shooting out. They almost look like attacks. Um, they look really nice. Again, I don't like to, like, poo-poo <laughs> too much, but I remember getting into arguments with people about, you know, they like, don't like the, you know, huge explosions like in Tekken and things like that. They think it's a little bit silly. But one of the reasons they exist is because we can't necessarily, like, you have to make some really nice sort of dynamic animation stuff if you wanted to show impact of, like, you know, bodies hitting bodies. And so when you don't have effects like that, you sort of get stuff like this. Where it's like, was he getting hit? The only way we could tell is by looking, you know, having familiarity with the game or looking at the life bar. And, you know, that looks bad. You know, you'll see some games that even if you, like, evade an attack, it'll show an effect to show that it didn't physically whiff. Like, there was, like, a property that caused it to whiff. Um, anyway... And here, this is actually a fun video if you want to check it out. Um, he leaves the Great Plateau in Breath of the Wild early. It's just kind of a fun, sort of. And I hadn't played Breath of the Wild, but they have some great effects that I am probably going to steal. So when this hits, you can see how it... Some really neat, that's not the one I'm looking at. But when he strikes with the club, you know, we have this shockwave. We actually have this effect going in, and then it pops back out. And then it pops back in again. So it's almost like a three-fold sort of animation. You can see that. So it's like we have the ring, create sparks and shooting out, and then some like secondary spikes coming out, and then they go back in. And they look a little weird in slow motion, but... Um, in full motion, they look so nice. I just think that's a really cool effect. It's another thing to keep in mind is that they, even if they show up and need to get out of the way early, you don't have to have like a single like spurt sort of effect that you've most of, that's generally what you'll see. Um, in creating, you know, you know, that's another avenue to create variety and to just explore, you know, the sort of visual design spaces to make it last longer, have secondary effects. You know, these are almost like double explosions. Um, thinking about it, Marvel 3 actually had effects like that. And in their, like, impact sound effects, it was this, like, doo -doo, like almost like a double bass sort of hit for every hit. It's really cool. Um, it makes it sound, like, incredibly, like, <laughs> devastating. <clears throat> so, hopefully that was, like, a cool little primer and some effects. Um... I'm going to, actually, I think this is good. I really need a drink. 
um, and splitting this up into two parts will be good. So I'm going to pause the stream so we can have like a second stream here and, um, you know, second video when I upload it. Um, and then we'll actually get into some creation. All right, be right back. 